What up my friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we have yet another what's for dinner meal inspiration video. But today I decided to mix it up a little bit on you guys and I didn't pick the meals that we're eating. I had John pick out all five of the easy weeknight meals we would be putting together during this video. I gave him absolutely no direction when it came to this task besides the fact that I just needed him to pick out five dinners and I didn't care what they were. If you're new here, hi, how are you? How's the family? Thank you so much for clicking on that thumbnail and giving me a chance. Over here, we do a lot of meal inspiration videos, but I also do a lot of haul videos. So I show off the things that I buy at Costco, Sam's Club, Trader Joe's. If you end up liking the vibe of this video, feel free to check out the rest of my channel. And without further ado, we're gonna dive right into the video and I'm gonna start you guys off with interviewing John to find out exactly what went into his thought process when it came to picking the dinner ideas for this week. John, you're here today because I decided that I need a break from thinking of recipes. So I pretended like it's gonna be a fun project for you when in reality, <laughs> I just trapped you into doing my work. Wait, so you're that's gonna, why? Not really. I do think it's fun. Okay. Okay. So basically what's happening is I asked you to come up with five dinner recipe ideas because I think that I have like kind of a one track mind with stuff sometimes, you know, like I have a vibe and I stick with she that vibe. vibe and then, I mean, I'm here for that vibe. Yeah. So I, I said, let's, vibe. let's take a break from Kate's vibe and let's see what John's vibe is. Let's learn a little bit more about John. So, oh, is that what this is? This yeah, is the only thing about see, John. Yeah, because I gave you no direction whatsoever. No I just direction. said five. Right. I said come up with five dinner recipes. She did. She said five dinner recipes. No and that parameters. Was it. So I'd love to interview you now, sir, to find out, you know, on behalf of the people, how did you come up with the meal plan? What <clears throat> went into it? Tell okay. us. Walk us through your mindset. Walk us well, through. Well, my the mindset, first of all, was I don't want to reinvent the wheel. So I want to use things that we have but I want to use the things that we have maybe in a different way. I like it. Um, but not in a way that's like so outrageous that we wouldn't like it. Right. Got so it. I wanted to keep well, it. Well, this is very specific. I know. I wanted to keep it on brand. Listen, you gave me a task and I, I, but I'm just saying with all of these parameters you set yourself, you came up with these five recipes quickly, bro. Okay. So we have from one of our Costco hauls that we have yet to touch a bunch of chicken thighs. So I went ahead and was like, you know what? We have so much chicken thighs. What could I do on multiple chicken thigh meals that wouldn't feel like, oh my God, I'm so over chicken. Yeah. After like the second. The other thing is, is John is just coming up with the meal plan. Doesn't necessarily mean he's the one doing the cooking. Well, I mean, I Either of us can cook. Right, or we can both do it. But sometimes Team. the ladies out there are going to know. Sometimes that mental load of just deciding what to eat, that is the worst part. Okay. Actually executing the meal sometimes is not even that bad. Okay, so go ahead. Sorry, I interrupted you. Okay. I'm holding you. So you can... That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first and foremost, I don't know why it stood out to me when I seen it. I was like, I, we got to make this. And I'm surprised we never have. I'm shocked. I've never made it. I mean, I've made similar. Shoyu so, chicken is similar, but... Shoyu chicken is similar. So this is huli huli chicken. Now you're um, going to tell the people because they might be new. Why would this be special to us? Because it's everywhere in Hawaii. Yeah, and we lived there for 15 years, yeah. almost 15 years, 13 years, something like that. You can go anywhere on any island and there is always huli huli chicken. On I the side feel like, of the road. Yep. On under the side a little tent. Yep. Was or like the, or the, uh, the trailers. Yes. They had the trailers behind the truck. Yep. They were just making huli huli chicken. No one questions anything. Right. It no smelled so good. Concerns. So I was like, you know what? We should try this. Yeah. The second one, I feel like it stood out to me. Yeah, this is a John one. This but is. I'm a, not mad about it. This is a me, but it's gravy baked chicken thighs. That sounds delicious. I know. I'm excited to see what happens. I know. With that. I, and you know what else I realized after the fact? What? <laughs> is all of the prep time for just the chickens? It's like five minutes. That's good. Five minutes. Well, those are the recipes that called out to you. They're, they they got to be there for a reason. You know what I mean? Yep. And you know what? My viewers appreciate it because if they don't have to do a lot of work to right. get delicious. Okay. Okay. So the next, this is the third and last chicken thigh recipe. And it is burst tomato burrata chicken thighs. I'm excited about this one. Yeah. I'm very excited. This feels like it's like a play on chicken parm. But that one actually says chicken breast, you know. 
Which I think is actually good because then it mixes it up even further and right. we have chicken breast as well. So after the chicken, then we had to so, gear into the idea of, okay, let's mix it up. Right. Use it so I was trying to think of what else do we have outside of chicken because I feel like three chicken meals. That's max. It'll I'm be, like, all right. Cannot, yeah. That's, all right. And then, but I I will say you did an excellent job at mixing up the flavor profiles. I'm excited. I like it. So that's there's no way we're gonna get sick of chicken with those because they are right. completely different. Right. All of these recipes, by the way, I got off Pinterest because Pinterest is life. <laughs> Not sponsored by Pinterest. Not anyway. sponsored. Found this. It called to me. We're doing it. We're doing it. It's Italian stuffed sausage, but you can also use bratwurst. I'm excited for this. I feel like this I'm gonna wanna make with like a linguine or yeah, something like that. Yeah, the long pasta too. Yeah. I support this. Yeah. And then last and final, I know we're gonna get a Kroger order this week. Always. And we get that ridiculously cheap tub of good ground turkey. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, I wanna do something fun that's like comfort and like super easy one pot. I just wanna do like a one pot. So it's a healthy turkey chili mac. Love it. One pot turkey chili mac. Let's go. Let's go. You know what I love about this? What do you love about is this? Is that I assigned this task to you to go out and pick five different recipes. You picked recipes that I've never done before. Yep. But I feel like you followed all the same principles that I always follow when yeah. it comes to making a meal plan. So it just cracks me up because it's like you are paying attention even if I don't realize you're paying attention. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm like, I was thinking you were going to need a lot more help in this homework assignment because I, we, I don't think I needed be, any help you didn't need any help at all I mean like I wouldn't be able to walk outside and figure out what to do with that truck that we got in the driveway but this guy can just step in the kitchen and it's no big deal I mean let's go <laughs> let's go anyways all right awesome job. and I feel like the other thing too is is I can make all of these meals like no problem they're like none of this every intimidate. single one that I'm looking at here it's like uh, like one is 50 minutes but the rest of them are all Nothing like intimidating. 30 me. minutes. And I, like the prep time, there's one that it says that total time is, this got to be wrong. It says total time four hours and 30 minutes, but it says prep time is 10 minutes, cook time is 20 minutes. Somebody messed up on the math there because <laughs> 10 plus 20 does not equal four hours and 30 minutes, but everything's fine. So I'm very proud of you. I think you've done an excellent job. I know that my viewers are also proud of you. We're but you enjoyed meals. doing this, right? Oh yeah, this was fun. Yeah. We could do this more often. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Okay, perfect. I, I love the challenge. All right, well, let's get into the video now, people. Let's get into the cooking. Okay, friends, we are starting with a Huli Huli chicken. This is from some type of blog that will be linked down below, thegirlinspired.com. In traditional Kate fashion, I am probably going to be adjusting the recipe a little bit. I'm mostly following everything she has, but this recipe calls for four to five pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I'm gonna be doing about three pounds. The other thing is I don't have ginger paste, so I, somewhere in here, am just going with some ground ginger. I also am gonna be using some Hawaiian sea salt because I think that makes sense with a huli huli chicken. I grabbed this recently at Trader Joe's, so we're gonna be using this in the recipe. She didn't call for that. Also, super random, but you guys know how I like to cook through things that I need to get rid of. I have like leftover onion and bell pepper. I figured that could not hurt because we're creating a marinade right now. So when we were looking through these recipes, I made a comment in the beginning that it said four and a half hours and I didn't understand why. The prep time is 10 minutes, the cook time is 20 minutes. So I was like, that only equals 30. Well, we went to go make this last night and realized you're supposed to marinate it and it's a four hour marinade. So that is why the total time is four and a half hours. So before you make this, be prepared that you are gonna have to marinate. Oh, the other thing is she calls for apple cider vinegar. Anytime I do any Hawaiian or Asian based type of food, I always go with rice vinegar. For me, I feel like this is a much more mild flavor. It allows the sweetness to come out a little bit more. Uh, other than that, she called for pineapple juice plus pineapple slices. I do not have pineapple slices, so I'm going with a can of pineapple chunks instead with the juice. So that'll cover that. And then the other thing is I'm adding liquid smoke because when you get huli huli chicken out in Hawaii they're cooking it and smoke is like pouring off of their smoker and stuff so I feel like liquid smoke is a necessary addition okay so we're gonna whip together this marinade get the chicken in the fridge let's get this party started you know 
I want you close Maybe hold your hand a little while Somehow I know You're gonna be the girl that I'll end up calling my own We ride around in style Sleeves rolled up, glasses on And then you make that smile And my heart starts racing When I'm with you Good day, friends. First taste test up in this video is the Huli Huli chicken. We had some drama. You weren't here for the drama. What drama? I am not very great at reading recipes. I'm just going to put it out there. I tend to just glance over the ingredient list and then think I know what to do. And apparently... I mean, it works. Yeah, it works. Apparently, with this recipe, what I was supposed to do is make the marinade and then pull half of the marinade out and then marinate the chicken in only half the marinade and then use the other half of the marinade to brush on the chicken later. Mm. However, I have some comments on that. A justification, if you will, for my actions. Okay. Even though it was completely unintentional. So my thing was the marinade just covered the chicken. So I don't see how I could have reserved half. Okay, so then, I, but also like, what is wrong with if you're about to cook the chicken? So you guys saw what John did. I ended up advising him to just slap down the chicken and then brush the marinade. I didn't brush it. You didn't brush it. He because, didn't even brush it because it was so soaked. It was so soaked. Like, what is the point of that? But what I did do was just pour it. Okay, then that's fine. Over. He poured it over it. Oh, wait. Mm, I mean, I don't know. So the good. whole point of a marinade is so you don't have to. I understand, like, if you're going to be doing, like, a sticky glaze or something. But, it, anyways. Anyways. So, I didn't follow the directions of the recipe. In the description box is going to be the inspiration, we're going to call it now, because I basically did not actually follow this recipe. I will link to give credit to the inspiration of the blog where we got this recipe from. You guys can read all about the adventures to Timbuktu that the blogger took on her way to making this huli huli chicken on the side of a mountain. I'm just kidding. I don't think she did that. But I will also type up what I did. Oh. You know what I mean? Smart. So it's like, cause I wanna give her credit. Cause I, you know, smart. some elements are there. But for the most part, we just went rogue, you guys, as usual. So anyways, that was a lot. Let's get into this. You're also supposed to cook this on a normal grill. And we don't have flame. that. No. We don't have that. We have a we have a blackstone. But I did add liquid smoke to the marinade. So roll reversal. Roll reversal. Now she's the five year old. Mmm, I am the five year old. Oh wow. That wow. is phenomenal. You know what this reminds me of? It was if any of you have ever lived in Hawaii. When you go to like places that have plate lunches and they're just hole in the walls and they just have the best food. John. Yeah, that's a way. Make I'm this. giving that like a nine and a half. I don't know what would make it better, but I just, I don't feel comfortable giving a 10. Yeah. But I'm going with the nine and a half. And also it was relatively easy. Yeah. Very. It simple. was the marinade. That's it. Like marinate it for four okay. hours and yeah. then cook it on a grill. Flip it twice. Dreams come true. That dreams, is... Dreams have been made. I'm blown away. What is your score? I'm going to go with like a eight and a half. Eight and a half? Yeah. That's really good. I'm like shocked. Yeah. That's really good. And like seriously, this is not something that you see on every recipe roundup. You know what I mean? Like I, right. I don't feel like anybody's making huli huli chicken. Right. So this was an excellent pick, good sir. 
I'm, I'm, I'm here. Sir, we're yeah, coming yeah. out swinging. I mean, we can only go down from here. That's a little scary. All right, perfect. Well, thank you for your feedback. We'll send that one to corporate. Get ready for the next recipe now. Next recipe we have is the mozzarella stuffed Italian sausage. This is an incredibly straightforward recipe, but the payoff was big. John basically just sliced some Italian sausages lengthwise, placed mozzarella string cheese inside, and then he pressed the sausage around the cheese and pinched it closed. He did a combination of Italian sausage and bratwurst so we could try both. You simply just cover all of it up after with marinara and then bake it in the oven. You serve it with your favorite sides. We did a sheet pan of roasted broccoli as well as some spaghetti. You guys, good evening. How are you? Although I don't know what time it is for you. Maybe you're watching this in the morning. John's children were on one today. So if I look like I've been through some stuff, I've been through some stuff. My children? Your children. They're your children today. Okay. In today's taste test, we have stuffed Italian sausages. I'm super excited about this. Very simple recipe. I mean... Very simple. Very simple recipe. Five minute prep time, cooks for 30 minutes, which was kind of a lie. It ended up being about 40 for us. Yeah, it was like say? 45. I think that was because I had too much sauce. Okay. This is from the blog, Whole Lot of Yum. It'll be linked down below. We decided to serve it with some spaghetti. And we also did some roasted broccoli with some seasonings and Parmesan cheese. You're going to feed me like five year old? What? I knew there was no way this was going wrong. You know what I mean? You shove some mozzarella cheese in Italian sausage, it's not going bad, you know? I want to try the brat. So John like had it in his head that he wanted to do brats with this, but I wanted Italian sausage. It's just funny, the only reason I picked this meal is because you made the comment, don't forget we have brats if you wanted to do something. And I was like, oh, I'll do this with the brats. And then we're gonna- But I just felt like mozzarella cheese belongs in Italian sausage, you know? They're both a vibe. Like, you mm. can't go wrong. Mm. On a bun? You, every single time. He just always wants to put it on a bun. I like buns. I like big buns and I cannot lie. Okay. No. no? Okay. I don't know which I like more, to be honest. Like, you, literally, if you have bratwurst at your house or Italian sausage, go with either. Truly, I think I'm going to give it, like, a nine. Wow. It's just me. She's not a marinara person. I'm not, that's the other, I'm not a marinara girl. I'm, like, an Alfredo girl. I am a simple type girl like i'm the type that i don't like complicated recipes i don't like things with 45 ingredients in it this has like five ingredients yeah you know what i mean like yeah. that is my vibe sometimes simple is best and that's what this is all right i'm okay. gonna go with the nine okay so we're both going nine yep i'm again i just want to take a moment to say you did a great job hey did a great job. I aim to please. Go get to eating. We're gonna send this feedback to corporate. You guys are about to dive into another recipe. Get excited. Let's go. Switching back over to a chicken recipe, we're doing a gravy baked chicken thigh here. For this one, you just start by seasoning all of the chicken in a large baking dish and then making the gravy. You pour the gravy over the chicken and bake it in the oven. You can serve this with anything you'd like, but John went with some mashed potatoes for it. Hold your hand in my hand, looking at the sunset, man, you're looking good tonight. I want to kiss you before the sun goes down. It's what you do. Okay, John, show the people. Show the people your plate, John. We've got, um, what was it called? Where's the recipe? Gravy baked chicken. Okay, so this one was from the blog Recipe Tin Eats. Everything will be linked down below. Yep. We, we ran into some some trials and tribulations on this one. I the, don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, it was all perfect. Everything was fine. The um, gravy was not gravy. It yeah, basically it was ended like, up just being a beef broth. Yeah, and I don't know if I screwed that up because I tried to double it. Yeah, but I don't think so because 
I mean, as long as you actually doubled all yeah, the Yeah, that's elements. all I did was a double it. So we, it does say, there is a note that says adjust gravy thickness if required. And there's a note for how to do that. Well, we definitely did adjust. We did adjust. So that, that's just what we're saying. The other thing I was going to talk about, oh, mashed potatoes. We made it in the Instant Pot. And I will link a video down below for how we accomplish that. Yes. Because we make the world's best mashed potatoes. So, and it's super easy. Let's dig in, John. Thanksgiving. I bet that's what this is going to taste like. I agree. Just need some cranberry sauce. Oh, crescent rolls. We should have made crescent rolls, John. Disrespectful. Put a little too much salt. In the gravy? In the gravy. But the chicken's bomb. This literally tastes like a chicken Thanksgiving. Yeah. This is a meat meal. The, it reminds me of something I'd get at like Cracker Barrel. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's definitely a new meal. Yeah. I just tasted it. Um, I'm going to go with like a five. With the I gravy? think that it, I think that it's good, but I'm just not like... This is not my style. Yeah, I'm gonna go with like, I feel like this is plain. Yeah, that's, I think, I think that there are a lot of people out there that would appreciate this meal. I'm just more the type that I like a lot of flavor in things. You know, the other problem too, is that I just made that Mississippi meatloaf not that long ago that had a mm. gravy, but it was like that super flavorful gravy. Right. So I think in my head, like I'm kind of like right. still fresh with that. Yeah. I think that it was nice to mix up the, the menu. Oh yeah, for you know sure. what I mean. And I think like making everything from scratch is always fun. Well, and, and I like any excuse to get some mashed potatoes in my life. I mean, we I don't will. Make them that often, I so. will second that. Yeah. And I feel like the gravy chicken mixed up the chicken meals that we've yes. been having. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's my favorite part is that you picked out three chicken recipes, and they are all very three like completely different. Yeah. So. If you're trying to work through a bunch of chicken from your freezer, I think these are three great options. This also, I made a lot of chicken. Yeah. The good news is that we can give some of this to the kids. True. So. Okay. Well, I'm going to give this like a six and a half. Six and a half. Yeah. Okay. I might have said six, but I'll, I'll bump it up a little. You'll bump it up a little bit. Just because the... So we're going to dive into our next recipe and get this feedback over to corporate. Roger that. I'm new here. How do we do this? Do we do it like that? Sure. It says to throw it all in a blender or food processor so chop it up like this next recipe on the menu was a turkey chili macaroni this was mostly a one pot meal with the exception that you do have to cook the pasta first it called for eight ounces of pasta so john ended up just making a full pound of pasta and reserved half of it for this recipe and stored the other half for the next meal that you'll see Set my wheels in motion I'm going crazy for you I feel like the ocean Hello friends we're back we have a healthy one pot one of my favorite things I love when it says one pot it wasn't one pot though it wasn't no because you have to cook the pasta in a separate pot. That is true. Wait, usually when there's like a pasta, yeah, you... There wasn't enough liquid in the... Yeah, I can tell. This would definitely not have... So it's a two-pot. Okay, wow. There's that. But anyways, healthy one-pot, two-pot, turkey chili mac. This came from Amanda Kiefer. Everything will be linked down below. And did you pretty much follow this recipe? Yes. The only thing that we deviated on is John tried this prior to adding some cheese. And he said, this needs cheese. No, I didn't try it. I just said that without trying it, I know. You know. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. We're cheese people, though. So the recipe does not call for cheese. John went ahead and shredded up a pepper jack block to add some pepper jack to this. I think it's a great call. Pretty limited ingredients on this. And it says that it takes... A uh, total of 25 minutes altogether. Do I feel you like think that took, that was true? It took longer to prep. I think if everything was prepped, it's 25 minutes to cook. But Got between it. the prep and cooking, I feel like... Well, it like says the prep was supposed to be 10 minutes and the cook, cook time was 15. That's a lie? Yeah. It was more? Okay. Yeah. Anyways, all right. So we're going to dive into this turkey chili mac. It's, um, you're supposed to use a whole wheat pasta. We didn't have whole wheat pasta, so we just used regular. But I was saying to John that if you wanted to make this like super nutritious, you could probably go with like a chickpea pasta Which or a lentil we, pasta. We really enjoy the chickpea pasta. I love that Bonza really brand good. one. It's so good. Okay. 
I got some with and without the cheese. I am pleasantly surprised because I truly thought that of all of them, this was going to be the one that I, not that I wouldn't like it, but that I wouldn't like it. You know? <laughs> I'm not going to like it, but I'm not going to But I'm like not going to like it. Like, I, I had a feeling this was going to be, like, my least favorite because I'm not a bean girl, really. I'm not a chili girl, really. It's just not one of the ones that I gravitate towards. Yeah. I thought this was going to be a you dish and not like a me dish. I feel like it's light. Very light. I love it because I feel like it has the chili flavor without like the heaviness of a chili yeah like you know how chili like it fills you up it's like a comfort meal it's really great fall winter meal but it's very heavy this i feel like you get all of the vibes of chili but it just feels like a light delicious yeah meal i feel like it needs a little bit more flavor i don't think so at all really i can taste the cumin did it have cumin in it yeah yeah like that cumin is like oh my goodness it's like on fire Okay. In, in a good way, like not on fire where it's too spicy. That's it gave what I the think flavor. Of. I'm missing spice. I think that you need to add like a little um, cayenne or something to yours. That's what I'm missing. But to me personally, boring Barbie over here. Boring Barbie. I, <laughs> I, um, <laughs> our long guy's here and he's probably like watching us like what in the world? Why are they talking to a camera? Uh, boring Barbie over here. I think that it's flavorful without being too spicy. But if you do like spice... It wouldn't hurt to add a little Well, cayenne. flavorful Ken over here is going to add some. Cayenne Ken. Cayenne Ken. Ooh, Cayenne That's Ken. That's a good one. Cayenne That's Ken. That's a good one, That's Kate. A good one. Good That's job. a good one. Yeah. Okay, anyways, what does Cayenne Ken have to say? He's going to add some. Yeah, he's going to add a little bit. But overall, I am literally so pleasantly surprised by that. Yeah. But I'm going to go ahead and give that... I'd say like a seven and a half. Wow. I'm surprised. Wow. I can't believe I liked that more than I liked the gravy chicken dish. Yeah. Yeah? For yeah. you too? So what would you score that one? That's like an eight. You think an eight? Yeah. I, well, I mean, without the pepper jack though? Oh yeah, with the, you need the, for me personally, if you're a cheese person, I think this needs cheese. Pepper jack kicked it off. And see, this is why, like sometimes if you're in a house, right, especially if you have kids that are like even over the age of like 10, yeah. I'd say involve the kids, have them go pick out a couple yeah, meals. Agreed. If you're a family of five like us, have everybody pick a meal Everyone pick and a meal. then you can days. try different things. Cause I would have never picked this. I feel like when the kids get a little bit older, they're going to eat the crap out of that. Yeah, that, this is a great family meal. There's so much. Let me grab the pot. I mean, I think the kids could eat this now. This huge pot right here plus the plate that we pulled for the taste test that's all and i mean this is an inexpensive meal it's pasta ground turkey and beans basically yeah you know so and most of the rest of it was just stuff from the um medicine i almost said medicine cabinet medicine cabinet the medicine yes. cabinet the medicine aka cabinet. the spice cabinet so we're gonna send this feedback to corporate you guys are about to dive into our final recipe which is the tomato burrata chicken situation. Yes. Burrata explosion. Can I tell you one thing? I'm ready. I think this is the most intimidating meal for me to cook. I could see that. Italian food is always, it's always a wild card, man. Yeah. You just never know. But I believe in you. Yeah. And mistakes happen in the kitchen. And uh -huh. if they do. You know what's funny is I picked all these meals. I've cooked all these meals. Except the Huli Huli chicken, you prepped it. Right, and you grilled it. And like in the beginning, I made a point to say, just because John picked the meals doesn't mean he'll necessarily be cooking the meals. It, out it may be me, but the way that our week worked out, it just ended up that John has cooked most of these meals. So, but I've enjoyed it. Like it's one thing if you pick the meals and you're like, here, this is what I want. Right. <laughs> I, here, peasant. <laughs> I'll sit at the table at my throne and just serve me my food, wench. Like that. <laughs> Not at all what I was good. All right, so we're gonna dive into the next and final recipe. Enjoy. Last recipe up on deck is the burst tomato burrata chicken. This was another simple meal to throw together, perfect for a busy weeknight meal. I absolutely love using kitchen shears when I'm cooking, and clearly John agrees because he made fast work of dicing up the chicken using those. This came together really easily, and we ended up serving it with some of the leftover rotini we had from the earlier chili mac recipe.
Friends, good evening, good morning, or good afternoon, depending on where it, what time it is, where you are. Uh, we have the final. Final meal. Okay, so this one was called Burst Tomato Burrata Chicken, and this was from the Call Me PMC. Okay, it'll be um, linked down below. You followed the ingredient. You followed the recipe. Yeah, the only thing that we didn't have was the grape tomatoes. We had the bigger tomatoes, but I still put them in and they burst. So. I okay. I had grape tomatoes. I bought grape tomatoes specifically for you for this, but that's fine. You can snack on those at a different time. It's fine. Um, the <laughs> we also didn't have actual burrata cheese. We had burrata spread from Trader Joe's. Right. A little different, but same vibes. Yeah. Same vibes. Let's dive in. I feel like I gotta get some of the tomato, you know? Cause that's a star ingredient. Oh, and I got a little pasta too. What are your thoughts? I don't know. You know what kind of reminds <laughs> me of? It almost reminds me of like, did you ever make back in the day the um the hamburger helper, but it was chicken helper? Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's what it kind of reminds me of. Like in a good way, it's yeah. like a simple, it's not something that like you're was, gonna go crazy over or anything, but like if you're just looking for like a solid and it feels pretty light. Yeah. I like that you went with rotini. Yeah. I feel like that's the perfect pasta for that. It one. was very easy to make. Yeah. Very easy. Was and, it one pot? Yeah, it was one pot. And I don't know why, but I had it in my head that I was intimidated by making this meal. Because it does, the photo makes it look pretty intimidating. But it wasn't. This was like one of the easier ones. So, so I thought it had good flavor. Yeah, it's definitely flavorful. And yeah. like I said, it's like a, it's a light, mild, like no muss, no fuss. Like, no I don't muss, know. No fuss. It's not like, it's not nothing to like, seriously, like if people are coming over or something, I wouldn't be like, this needs to be made. Okay, so what would you say your rating is on that guy? It's like Mac. a six and a half. I was going to go six, yeah. Yeah. I'd Which say, is funny for you because it's tomato. Yeah, I I feel like this entire video. So it's so funny because John clearly picked the um, the meals, and um, I'm not a picky eater, but there are certain things that I just generally don't like. Right. And I so I feel like as I'm editing this, I'm watching it. I'm always like, I'm not a chili girl. I'm not a this girl, and I'm not a tomato girl. But because of the fact that I'm not that picky, I'll eat whatever. Right. But the tomatoes don't really bug me in that because. It's a very mild tomato flavor, which is funny because it's the first word or the second word in the recipe. So you'd think that it's like on and popping. Now let's go ahead and rank our recipe, our, our meals. Now that we're done. Now that we're done. Number one for me, if you can only make one recipe from this video. I already know. Can I, can I guess? Please guess. Huli Huli chicken. 100%. <laughs> I am still thinking about that Huli Huli chicken. Yeah, that's my number one. What's crazy too, is that we have leftovers from all of the other meals, but that one only made like enough leftovers for like one additional lunch. Right. And here's the thing. That would be the perfect freezer meal. So what my game plan is, is I'm going to purchase an entire pack of chicken thighs from Costco. I'm gonna take half of them and do the huli huli chicken for like meal prep for that week, and then put the other half in freezer bags and store it in the freezer for a fast freezer meal. I'm not kidding you guys. That is one of the best chicken recipes. Well, I feel like we should have saved that one for last. We should have because, and I actually said it in the video. I said, uh -huh. we can only go down from here because that was seriously like yeah. one of the top, the recipe that we used as inspiration had called for like pineapple slices. Mm. And she grilled those pineapple slices with the huli huli chicken. I think that next time when we make it, we're gonna have pineapple on the side and grill some pineapple with it. The other, oh, you know what? Oh, you know what? Here we go again. Is take that marinade from the Huli Huli chicken and chunk up some chicken, let it marinate for like the four hours and then make kebabs with it. With pineapple on the skewer and like cherry tomatoes on the skewer and even bell pepper, whatever you want, but that marinade is gonna be yeah. in the rotation from now on. That's a good one. That's a good one. Another funny thing is that I don't usually like recipes that call for store-bought ketchup in something. Because to me, it's always like ketchup is already a sauce. So I feel weird putting that into something to create a different sauce. That feels illegal. But that feels illegal. I decided to go with it on this one and it paid off. So that is number one in my heart. What was your number one? The also the Hulu chicken. chicken sandwich. Okay. 
Number two, I'm going with the stuffed Italian sausage. My number two as well. We agreed last time when we did this too, I believe. Yeah. Next one for me, shockingly, was the turkey chili mac. That was really? my number three. I'm surprised. I thought that was so good. Definitely needed the cheese, but I thought that was so good. And I'm surprised because that is so not my usual vibe. Yeah, I'm going to go turkey chili mac as the next one because I liked the chicken and gravy. I okay, feel like so the your number three is chicken My number and gravy. three is chicken and gravy because I feel like the chicken and gravy to me was like a, it was like a wannabe Thanksgiving meal. So if like a you're lot craving easier. Thanksgiving... Mm. You just make this and be yeah. like, oh, you just got a little hit. That's why I said it's kind of like a Cracker Barrel meal. Like, you know, like when you're in a mood yeah. for Thanksgiving, I would go to a Cracker Barrel. Right. For me, it's hard. Like, honestly, number four and number five are like right next to each other. I think I would go with the burst tomato burrata chicken as my number four. And then number five, the, gra the gravy baked chicken. But it's neck and neck. Yeah. And nothing in this video did I like not like. Right. Again, I'm just like proud of you because I'm, like I said, I've been editing, putting things together, just watching while John is doing the cooking and stuff. And it's just funny because we don't talk about certain techniques or whatever, but this is how I know like kids really watch you because like you watch me, you know what I mean? And like you soak in things that I do. Yeah. So I know our kids are going to do the same thing. Right. So it's like, you better be careful. You know what I mean? You got to be careful because people are watching what you're doing. So my number four is the chili mac. And then you're in, five is that. Five is the burrata. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let us know what's on your meal plan because we need some more inspiration over here. You know, because you'll be having another what's for dinner coming your way pretty soon. We're going to do it again because we always have to eat here. The kids keep showing up. John keeps showing up expecting food anyways okay and you had something that you wanted to say i just wanted to come out and say i i know it's kate Costa channel i go on her uh comments because he's the world's best hype man and i just want to say that i appreciate all of you guys the way you boost her the channel it really it brings so much joy to me and i see how much joy it brings to her mm -hmm. and i just wanted to say thank you i get to live with this <laughs> every day and now you get two days a week of it where it's just so much gratitude that there are so many people out there that enjoy what i get to live with <laughs> John was reading the comments and he was like, I want a little airtime and I just want to thank people. So if you think this is random, it's because he seriously, like he'll come to me like two or three times a week randomly. And he just like pops in and looks at the comments and is like, oh my God, can you believe so-and-so said this? And wow, this was such a nice comment. And it's seriously like, I sa I've said it before, so this is probably repetitive, but I know social media has such a bad rap when it comes to like people being mean, but I don't experience that. I don't experience that. I've experienced it on other platforms, but in terms of this community, I just feel like you guys are the sweetest people ever. Yeah, you make sure. me laugh, you make me cry. Literally the co comments that I get are so kind that I will tear up and it's just it's a beautiful thing so if you just need like your faith in humanity restored just go check out my comments every so often and just like say hi to one another because I swear I know that you guys would hype each other up too because you're so wonderful to me I'm just I honestly feel so blessed to have such a wonderful community that shows up all the time for me it's crazy so thank you so much on behalf of both of us and for our kids because when you're nice to us, we're nicer people to our children. So they're also <laughs> <laughs> they're also benefiting from it as well. All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much. I hope we delivered whatever you were looking for when you clicked on that thumbnail. If we did, reward us by giving this a thumbs up. And also, go on the channel and turn on the notifications. That way you don't ever miss a video. Ooh. I've never said that before, but that's today's homework assignment, Ooh. okay? Get on there, turn on the notifications. But the videos come out every Sundays and Thursdays, spoiler alert. <laughs> so, sometimes I'll toss in a random bonus video on Tuesdays. We appreciate you guys so much, and have a magical day. Bye!